Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I now call to order the 80th annual meeting of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation. If there are no objections, I appoint Mr. Steve Miner of Ty Singer Vance to conduct our business session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you all for being here with us today. I appreciate the opportunity to participate in your annual meeting. Annual meetings like this where members of the electric utility come together and elect the directors are really a hallmark of electric cooperatives and I think truly set us apart from other utilities. Your directors live in the same community that you do. They also take electricity at the same rates and terms as you do. And I know the board and the management of the cooperative appreciates your support and presence here today. There are a few formal matters which we need to take care of prior to hearing the reports of the president and chairman, attending to any new business, and going on to the prize drawings. The first thing is I'd like to um, appoint Mr. Jim Roberts, who's standing over there, as our parliamentarian. Uh, quite aptly, Jim will be using Roberts' rules of order in the event of any questions of a parliamentary nature. Second, when you registered today, you were given an agenda that looked like this. If there are no objections, we will adopt this agenda and follow it today. Hearing no objections, the agenda is adopted. I'd next like to ask your corporate secretary, Ms. Lynn Price, to give us the secretary's report. Thank you. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, the official notice of this meeting contained in the August issue of Jimco News was mailed to 190,445 member customers on July 12, 2019. Proof of mailing has been signed by the appropriate authorities and will be included as a part of the minutes of this meeting. Our registrars have notified me that 1,096 member customers have been officially registered to participate in this meeting tonight. This number, Mr. Chairman, exceeds the quorum to conduct official business of the cooperative. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Price. We appreciate that. The next formality we have to take care of is action on the minutes from last year's annual meeting. Does anybody remember last year when we had the rain? Much better weather this year, and I know we're all appreciative of that. Um, our minutes are actually a transcript of last year's meeting, and they are on file at the cooperative's headquarters where they can be reviewed at any time during business hours. So a motion to dispense the reading of the minutes and approve them as transcribed would be in order. Do I have such a motion? We have a motion and we have a second. I have a motion and a second to approve the transcript of last year's meeting as the minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the minutes are approved. I'll now ask Mr. Terry McMichael, your independent auditor, to come to the podium to deliver the auditor's report. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to serve your cooperative during the year and to review the financial report for the year ended May 31st, 2019. The September 2019 issue of Jimco News contained the financial statements of your cooperative, which I will now briefly summarize. 
your cooperative has assets totaling approximately $1.1 billion, the majority of which represents utility plant. Utility plant is the poles, wires, transformers, and other equipment used to bring electricity to your homes, businesses, and other organizations. Your utility plant increased by approximately $27 million during the year. That increase is the result of providing services to new members, as well as improvements to the existing system to assure continued reliable service to you, the members. Your equity increased by approximately $20 million, which is the difference between revenue and expenses for the current year of approximately $30 million, less patronage capital returned to you, the members, of $10 million in the form of retirements paid. The strength of your balance sheet and the results of operations for the current year assured compliance with the requirements of your lenders. You can be proud that from a financial standpoint that you have a healthy cooperative. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stand closer to this mic so you can hear me. Hopefully you can now. Good evening again. On behalf of your board of directors, who you see seated behind me here, I want to welcome you to the 80th Jackson EMC annual meeting. We sincerely appreciate your interest and participation in the business of this cooperative that operates to serve you. Wow, 80 annual meetings. I've been to quite a few annual meetings, but I wasn't at that first meeting. These people on the screen behind me here were our pioneers, the first people to serve as your board of directors. To recognize this milestone, I thought it would be interesting for us to look back over our years at Jackson EMC and learn about the company our family, friends, and neighbors built. Eighty years ago, our first annual meeting was held in Jackson County at what is now the historic Jackson County Courthouse. Annual meeting was a little different then. Our founding board members would talk about new projects that, that would bring power to communities for the first time. Today, we talk about projects that increase the reliability of the network we've built. Back then, we were teaching members how to use electricity for the first time. Now we are learning how to conserve it. Not everything changes. We still share the delicious chicken dinner prepared by our local FFA chapters. We energized our first lines on April the 10th, 1939. That first year, we served members on 690 miles of wire. Today, our network stretches more than 14,000 miles across 10 counties. Our population has changed. We have many more people calling Georgia home today than we did in 1939. And Jackson EMC serves some of the fastest growing areas in our state. Right here, Jackson County is the 10th fastest growing county in the United States with a 4% population growth between 2017 and 2018. In that time, the county added 2,706 new residents. In 1986, Gwinnett County was named the fastest growing county in the United States. The growth has slowed, but Gwinnett remains the second largest county in the state, and Hall County is number 10. That growth has added nearly 4,000 meters to our distribution system over the past 12 months, bringing the total meters we serve today to more than 232,000 meters. Based on meters served, we're the second largest electric cooperative in the nation. In the past year, Jackson EMC members used over 5 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. Eighty years ago, we used to talk about power consumption. 
in terms of the work it could help us do on our farms. We told our members how one kilowatt hour could milk 40 cows or churn 70 pounds of butter. We don't talk about electricity that way anymore. Our reliance on electricity to live our lives comfortably has increased 50 times over. At that time, our members used around 22 kilowatt hours of electricity a month. Today, an average member uses close to 1,200 kilowatt hours every month. We're spending some time looking back tonight, and with this year being the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, I wondered how much energy we used getting to the moon. It turns out in 2018, our members used an amount of energy equivalent to around 950 trips to the moon. While we are adding new residential members, our commercial and industrial load is growing also. This year, we welcomed 450 new commercial and industrial members who add 28 million kilowatt hours of competitive commercial and industrial load to our distribution system. These new members represent a variety of industries, including the new Weston Hotel in Duluth, and the new Jackson County High School. This growth continues to require expansion and improvement of our distribution network. In the past 12 months, your cooperative has invested nearly $50 million in the distribution network that serves you today. While we added 144 miles of energized, energized wire last year to serve new members, most of that investment was spent to make your power supply even more reliable. That included the installation of 47 more automated switches this year. They help us get the lights back on faster when outages occur. Right now, we have nearly 300 of these installed, and we are working toward installing more than 500 across our distribution system. Over the next four years, we plan to invest $208 million in our distribution system to upgrade lines and equipment, improve reliability, and serve our growing membership. This infrastructure is needed as we expect to add nearly 16,000 new meters to Jackson EMC by the end of 2023. We are focused on providing you reliable service and on securing the electricity we need from a variety of sources, including renewable resources. In 2018, Jackson EMC members received 66 million kilowatt hours of renewable electricity through our partnership with Green Power EMC. A third of that was generated by solar power which was enough to totally power 1,450 of your homes last year. We continue to invest in large-scale solar projects that benefit our members. Through several new products under construction in Middle and South Georgia, we'll add more solar power in the coming years. In 2022, we anticipate receiving 47 million kilowatt hours of solar power. But making sure you have the reliable power you need is only part of the job. The other part is making sure your power is affordable. As board members, it's our responsibility to make sure your cooperative is run efficiently. And one measure of efficiency is what you pay for your electricity. Jackson EMC members pay 15% less than people receiving electricity from almost any other country other company. That's an average savings per year of $300. Another measure of efficiency is margin refunds. As owners of a not-for-profit cooperative, you're eligible to receive a portion of the funds left over at the end of the year after all the cooperative's expenses are paid. That money is called margin refunds, and your board is proud to be able to return it to you. Last December, 
Eligible Jackson EMC members receive $10 million in margin refunds. This year, this year, this year, your board of directors is pleased to announce that this December we'll return $12 million in refunds to members who receive members who received service in 1991, 92 and or 2018. That's a heavy check. When that refund is mailed, Jackson EMC will have returned $147 million to our members since we were founded back in 1938. So in closing, I'd, I would just like to say, along with the other members of your cooperative's board of directors sitting here on the stage, I want to tell you we are honored to play a role and providing the reasonably priced, high quality electric service we know you depend on. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes my report. And now, if you will, please help me welcome Jackson EMC's president and CEO, Chip Jenkins. Chip. Ah. Good job. Wow, good evening. How are y'all doing tonight? You know, I was walking through the crowd earlier and I saw more University of Georgia hats at this meeting than I have ever seen in, in any of the meetings I've been to. Um, I, I, uh, how about it for the Georgia fans that are in the crowd tonight? Yeah, how about that? Got a pretty big game coming up this uh, weekend. I think that's going to turn out pretty good. I uh, know that because I did not see one Notre Dame hat in the crowd anywhere tonight, and I look. So uh, I want to thank Otis uh, for his comments. That was a really big check that represented some really big dollars, and we're proud of that, returning that to the members. You know, It's just one part of a really amazing annual meeting that we put on every year. It's the food, the, the music, the, the opportunity to spend time with so many good folks like you, all of our Jackson EMC members coming together and doing the business of the cooperative. So I just really want to thank you for being here tonight and for spending time with us tonight. We know your, your schedules are very busy and you got lots of other things that you could be doing, but we're glad you came to spend our 80th anniversary with us tonight and appreciate you being here. As, as Otis pointed out, Jackson EMC has a very rich history of, of innovation and reliability and service. We've been at this for a while. And, and you just heard from Otis how, we, how we're doing as a business. And I just want to spend a minute talking to you about how we, we try to provide the very best service that we can, service that we hope exceeds your expectations routinely. You know, when you're at home and you, you flip on a light switch, what you expect to have happen is for the lights to come on. And, and when, you, when you're cooking dinner for the family, um, you know, you need the stove to work right. You need the microwave and the refrigerator to work right. Even once your air conditioner is as hot as it's been this year to, to keep you cool. And, and pretty soon that's going to be behind us. You're going to want your heat pump to keep you warm. And, and you're relying on Jackson EMC. And, and we realize that. You expect to have the electricity flow into your homes and businesses every minute of the day. And, and you should have that expectation of us. It's, it's why we're here. So our goal, as always, is to keep the lights on for all of our members all the time. And, and when we do that, we know that we, we meet your expectations. But, but for us, that's just really not, not good enough. We want to exceed your expectations. That's, that's our goal. And so you may be asking, how do we do that? You know, exceeding people's expectations is not easy, especially when when Mother Nature comes to visit and she wreaks havoc on our electric distribution system like she's done so many times before, and the trees come down and, and poles get broken and, and, and we need to restore power faster each time. We know that's your expectation. Faster than we did the last storm is when you want us there. Um, we know that we've got to do that in a way that, that keeps the community safe and especially our employees safe because it's a very dangerous job that they have and a very dangerous business that we're in. But we do try to get better with each new challenge. We try to learn. We try to clear the right away better than we have before. We try to install the latest and greatest equipment to serve you better. 
things that help us identify outages faster. And we even plan for threats in advance like oncoming storms and we try to put people in place ahead of time. Before they're even needed and before you know they're out there, we're trying to be very proactive in those efforts. That's our way of being innovative because we're always on the lookout for enhanced technologies that increase our reliability while keeping costs down for, for all of our 230,000 plus members. And as Otis told you, we've been doing things like installing automated switches throughout our system that radically decrease the number of Jackson EMC members that are affected by power outage. And they do it all by themselves automatically without us ever laying a finger on those switches. And you'll start to notice that over time as we install more and more of those switches, you'll see that faster response each and every time a storm blows through. Fewer of you will face the discomfort of going without power, whether it's a storm or any other event that causes damage to the electric system due to this innovative technology, and we're very, very proud of that. But we wanna do more than keep the lights on. We wanna provide outstanding service to our members by um, each and every way we can. One of those ways that we do that is through the, the technology that we, that we bring you. Um, we have that technology installed this year. It's in place in our call center. And, and one of the ideas that's, that's ongoing in our call center is one contact resolution. Now, one contact resolution, it, it sounds complicated, but what it really means is that you get answers the very first time that you call, the very first time that you email, or the very first time that you message us. That's our goal in the call center, that's how we, how we strive to meet and exceed your expectations there. Those are some of the ideas that we brought to the table. But we also like to hear ideas about how we can improve from you. And you've told us over and over again about uh, through our surveys, through phone calls, through online forums, through meetings, all the ways that we reach out to you, our members, to get feedback about our performance. And, and we, we appreciate that feedback that you give us. Overall, we hear positive feedback about the job that we're doing from you, but we also learn about ways that we, we can improve. For the last few years, technology has surfaced as an area that members and employees would like to see us improve here at Jackson. And after hearing that feedback from you, we began a journey to improve that experience through things like online bill paying, outage restoration updates, and access to information about your energy usage. We're trying to make all of those features easier for you to access and easier for you to use. Now we've had those features around for quite a while, but we wanted to make them better. When we started our evaluation, we had a number of software systems from a number of different vendors for member information, for outage management, for a lot of other tasks that we had going on. And individually, each of those systems was very, very good. And as a member logging in to pay your bill or view your energy use, you likely had a very good experience with those systems. But there was one major problem with those, and it was that all those systems were, were separate and independent from one another. And we had to spend a lot of time and resource making them all work together to provide the experience that you wanted. So recognizing that, in 2016, we began researching how we could improve that technology. And after extensive research, our team of employees that were given that assignment recommended moving all of our systems to one single software package that would function better. It was the best way to provide enhanced service for our members, and we got to work on that as quickly as we could. Behind the scenes, while our employees developed plans for moving all of our information to this new system, they also kept the business going as usual, and that's, that's not easy to do. I want to commend the incredible talent and commitment and creativity of our employees who made this transition happen all while staying focused on you, our members. As uh, Jerry, yes, thank you very much. Great employees doing this. Our project manager, Jerry Sidholm, for that technology initiative said, we had to build a plane while at the same time we kept the one we're on flying. And that's exactly what that group did. They built a plane while flying another one. Three years later, here we are, we've combined all of those systems, and in March we launched a completely new software package. This upgraded our accounting, outage management, mapping, and our member information system. And as a member, it gave you a new account management tool called My Jackson EMC. 
MyJackson EMC is an online platform and mobile application offering a new way to pay your bill or to view your energy usage or report outages or even sign up for new services. Now, if you haven't signed up for that yet, I encourage you to do so. That's MyJacksonEMC.com. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your computer. Once you sign up, you'll learn more about the personalized features that are available to you, like new communications channels, including being able to text with us. And as members, you can choose how you want to be communicated with and what you want to hear from us. So there's lots of options there for you. It's exciting to see that members can do all of these things easily on their phone, as I mentioned, or on the website. And so far, 80,000 members have signed up for that. So are you part of the 80,000? I hope you are. And if not, I want you to put that on your to-do list when you leave here tonight. You'll really, really enjoy the new features and conveniences that it offers. The new technology also lays the groundwork for some future additional enhancements. In the years to come, we're positioned to offer new services that you may want, like prepaid metering, which gives you the option to prepay your electric bill and track your use. Prepaid metering, when it arrives, will put you in control of your payment and use and eliminate service disconnects as well as reconnect fees. So our new software has all of those features that I mentioned that make our cooperative and employees more efficient. Uh, it, it's, it's even touched us out in the field. It's touched us out in the trucks with the linemen and how they perform. The linemen in the field use this technology to receive job assignments and report progress on outages. Our linemen have always been very, very responsive. You know that. But this new technology delivers their work assignments directly to them electronically while they are in the field, including detailed driving directions that allow them to reach a piece of equipment that needs to be repaired, or even directions on how to get to the very transformer that serves your house faster than ever. These things like work assignments and reports used to be a, a very cumbersome paper process. But in fact, this technology has allowed us to eliminate just about every piece of paper that's involved in those forms of tracking. Our new system represents a huge leap forward for Jackson EMC as we strive to achieve our vision of being the best forward-thinking, innovative energy supplier providing a friendly and fulfilling work environment for our employees. We move our cooperative forward by setting goals. We ask ourselves, what do we want to achieve? What weaknesses can we overcome? What strengths can we use to make ourselves better? Those are the kind of questions we're asking ourselves, and it's a very collaborative process. It allows us to take a measure of the progress that we've made and to look ahead at how we can make your cooperative better. We constantly ask these questions of ourselves, of our employees, and of you, our members, and we appreciate your feedback. And we're going to keep asking those questions because it helps us improve each and every year into the cooperative that we know that you want us to be. Now, I want to wrap up by thanking all of you for being here tonight. Again, we appreciate the time and investment in, in, in you being here and being engaged and helping us do the business of your cooperative. Your participation in this meeting tonight makes a cooperative a cooperative. This is how we operate. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and please stick around for that grand prize drawing. It's still up for grabs. Get your tickets ready. Double check your numbers. That's $3,000 and energy efficient appliances that will be up for grabs in just a few minutes. you got to be present to win. And please drive safe going home. We love having you here. We appreciate you being here. Please come back next year and bring this good weather with you when you come. Thank you. Thank you, Chip and Otis, for those reports uh, and for your leadership of the cooperative. It's now time on the agenda for the election of directors. The bylaws provide two ways for candidates for the board of directors to be nominated. One way is to be nominated by the nominating committee. The other way is by a written petition of 50 members. I will now call on Mr. Douglas Bennett from the nominating committee to report on nominations. The nominating committee of the Jackson Electric Membership Corporation met at the Cooperative Headquarters Office, 850 Commerce Road, Jefferson, Georgia, 
at 9 a.m. on February 15, 2019. In accordance with the bylaws of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation, we wish to place in nomination the following members for consideration by membership at the meeting of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation to be held on Thursday, September 19, 2019, and voted on at said meeting to serve for a three-year term beginning on that date. Representing Barrow County, Chuck Steele. Representing Gwinnett County, Otis P. Jones. Representing Hall and Lumpkin County, Steve Blair. Signed, Steve Bates, Bethany Batuzic, Douglas Bennett, Clay McDaniel, Lydia McClure, Mamie Outler, Mark Sizemore, Timothy Jake Stringer, and Alicia Williams. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. I will also report that this year there were no nominations made by petition. Your bylaws provides that when there is only one candidate for a seat on the board of directors, the election shall take place by voice vote. So it is now in order, since we have only one candidate for each of the three positions, that we elect Mr. Steele, Jones, and Blair by voice vote. Do I have such a motion? We have a motion. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second to elect Mr. Steele's Joan and Blair. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The ayes have it. And I'd like the minutes to reflect that Mr. Steele, Jones, and Blair have been elected for a three-year term. The next item is unfinished business, and there is no unfinished business from last year's meeting. So does anyone have any new business to bring before the meeting? Any new business? Hearing no new business, a motion to adjourn would be in order. We have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. All opposed, no. The ayes have it. We stand adjourned. Good luck with the prize drawings. Please drive safely on your way home. And thank you again for being a part of Jackson EMC.